Hello everyone out there in YouTube world, Facebook world, social media world, the world, wherever you might be watching me from. Welcome to another edition of Musings with MGL. Uh, thank you for tuning in as always. It's been a little while since I've done a video, but I'm working on some other YouTube channels regarding some of the other uh, things I enjoy in my life other than the Second Amendment. So I uh, kind of got busy with that and believe it or not, they, even though the court systems down here uh, in Florida are closed, there's still actual court going on and work to do. So I got a, a little bit busy last week, so I haven't done a video in a couple weeks. So this week I want to do a video kind of on what the original intention I started this channel for was to kind of give my musings and thoughts again on the Second Amendment from a legal standpoint, from a, a conservative, libertarian style standpoint, constitutionalist, like I like to call myself, standpoint. Everything kind of got a little bit sidetracked in the beginning with the uh, incident that's going on around the country right now but uh, today I wanted to do something to kind of get back to what the original roots was for and to give you my musings on the reason for the Second Amendment and I cannot sum up uh, any better than this meme that I found uh, online about the Second Amendment clearly uh, you can easily read it the Second Amendment applied to all types of arms and was specifically intended to guarantee that private citizens could never be outgunned by the government. Anyone who claims otherwise is either ignorant or lying. That basically succinctly sums up what not only I believe, but what the Second Amendment actually stands for. Any of this nonsense that you hear from people uh, on the left, and even some people on the right, that want to tell you that it's for any reason other than that is wrong. There may be other secondary reasons that have become synonymous at this point with the Second Amendment, such as the concept of the right to self-defense, when everybody says, you know, it's a God-given right to defend yourself, therefore we have the Second Amendment. That's kind of true, but it's not just to defend yourself, because if you get trapped into that story of, well, I just have a right to defend myself, then somebody's going to say, well, you don't need, you know, an 87-round clip with ghost gun capabilities to defend yourself. Anybody can defend themselves with um, one handgun or six shots or you see these memes or these people out there that say things like oh if you need more than you know six shots to defend yourself you must be a really bad shot etc etc so if you get trapped into this concept of saying it's for self-defense because i have a god-given right to self-defense and that's where the second amendment comes in that's true so again it's it's a secondary concept and it kind of gets wrapped in with it but it's it's not the reason why it's there because if it's the only reason why you're there then you can self-defend with not multiple firearms, not assault weapons or military grade firearms, et cetera, et cetera. You can self-defend with something else. You can even, some would say, self-defend with things other than firearms. So don't get trapped into that argument. Recently, I believe uh, Ted Cruz, and look, I'm a fan of Ted Cruz. Um, I, I like him. He's very conservative, obviously. He's a constitutionalist. But he got into an argument a couple months ago with freaking Alyssa Milano, of all, all people, about the Second Amendment. And he would, kept saying that I have a right to self-defense, I have a right to self-defense. And they, it put him in this trap. So there's actually a video out there floating around, you can just Google it, uh, Alyssa Milano and, and Ted Cruz arguing with each other, where he's talking about having a, a weapon for self-defense and the Second Amendment for being self-defense. And she pipes up and says, oh, and by the way, I own two firearms in my house for self-defense. So it's okay to have firearms for self-defense, but you don't need more than the two handguns like she has in her house. And a lot of people kept calling her a hypocrite for that. And, you know, she may be a hypocrite when it comes to a lot of things and maybe is on gun rights. But that particular statement, she's not a hypocrite for. Because if her position is, and if Ted Cruz's position was, that the firearm is for self-defense, that's why with the Second Amendment, well, she basically just, in my opinion, blew his argument out of the water by saying, well, I have two, two guns for self-defense. That's not the conversation we're here for. We're here about why you have assault weapons and why you have military-grade weapons, why you need all these extended magazines, etc. So don't get bogged down into that trap, okay? Self-defense is a great reason, obviously, to include and kind of throw into the Second Amendment, but that is not the reason for the Second Amendment. It's also clearly not for hunting, okay? This bull crap that we always hear about, you know, you don't need an AR-15 and 30 rounds to hunt a deer. Once again, you always hear the same crap. Well, if you need that many rounds to kill a deer, then, then you're a crappy shot anyway. Um... That's obviously not what it's true either. So people are real quick to dismiss that when I notice in the Second Amendment community when people say, you know, it's for hunting. Everybody in the Second Amendment community or anybody who could read the Constitution or knows anything about history can clearly tell you it's not about hunting. That, that's the most ridiculous 
uh, statement that's ever been out there that, that it's about hunting. It's never been uh, about hunting. Nobody can make that argument with a straight face. But you can make the argument, again, with a straight face about the self-defense thing. So we need to make it clear that the only reason that the founders created the Second Amendment was for this reason right here, okay? The concept is to make sure that you have a sufficiently armed citizenry to protect yourself from a tyrannical government, okay? The Founding Fathers had just came out of a war where they fought against a tyrannical government, okay? So they knew that the only reason they were able to win that war is because they had similar arms that the tyrannical government had at that point. At least their citizens did. Everybody was basically using the musket um, and the same basically handheld uh, firearms, explosive devices, or whatever that everybody had. Everybody was basically on the same playing field. Now, obviously, your standing armies would have larger artillery, such as cannons and et cetera, and boats and ships. So they had to form an army to get the higher grade military stuff like uh, artillery. However, the military troops that they used carried the same muskets that the military troops used on the other side. So they had similar firearms, okay? That was, it wasn't even a thought in the founders' minds um, that they should have something that uh, is less uh, of a firearm or has less capacity or, 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 or power or whatever that the other opposing army would have because clearly you would lose if that was the case. So they just came out of this war where they had to use the same weapons that the uh, other side was using, and they defeated them in that war. So here they are. Imagine being in a war that you just had to do that. You had to throw out a tyrannical government. You had to rely on your citizens to form these citizen armies and these citizens' militias because they didn't have a standing army because they didn't exist as a country at that point. So they had to get all the citizens together to throw out this tyrannical government by King George. So now you're sitting here and you're making a new government after you've just done that. You've just come out of that situation. You're making a new government. And you realize that while you're making this new government, you have to make sure that this new government, if it ever turned tyrannical, could be overthrown just like the last government that you overthrew. And you know, because you just went through it, that the only way you could overthrow a tyrannical government is to have the same weapons and the same firepower and to make sure that the citizens had all the same weapons that the government, who might turn tyrannical, has. Okay, So they're going into creating this government with that that mindset. Knowing that, there is no possible way that you could determine that when they created the Second Amendment, that they created it for any reason other than for every individual citizen to have the same firearms that the government would have, because that is the only reason to put that in there. If that's not the reason to put it in there, then you don't need to put it in there. Okay, Or if you're putting it in there for hunting, you put it in there because everybody has to hunt, they can own a firearm. Or if it's for self-defense, because everybody has a right to self-defense, you put it in there for a firearm. No. They came out of there with the understanding that they may need to fight. They may need to, need to do this again. Okay, They were terrified. You go back and read the Federalist Papers and everything else that were written back then. They were absolutely terrified that this new government they created would become just like the old government that they had. <coughs> Shut up. We don't do editing here. That's the chocolate lab over here being a, a douche and wanting to bark and get inside the house. Um, but remember, I don't do editing here. I just go. So... That's why they needed it. There's no reason for them to put it in there for any other reason for that. And again, they could have stated it more plainly uh, if it was for any reason other than that. And by the framing it the way that they framed it, you know, the, the, the anti-gunners will bring up this militia statement, this militia statement. But again, what did I just say? The militias were made out of individual citizens who had firearms, okay? They had to put the call out and everybody showed up and they brought their own firearms because remember, they didn't have a standing armory, they didn't have a treasury, they didn't have any way to buy this stuff. So the people had to come and bring their own firearms to be part of these militias. So when they use the phrase militia in there, they're not talking about the National Guard because that's a standing army that's, that's got its own budget, it's got its own, own uh, firearms already, it's got its own artillery, so you, don't, you would need that. So that's not what they mean. When they mean militia, they mean us. They mean you, they mean me, they mean everybody else who's a private citizen may need to someday come together and, again, fight a tyrannical government. So don't listen to any of their crap they say about uh, it's meant for a militia either. It's only meant for this sole purpose that you see right here. Applied to all types of arms and was specifically intended to guarantee that private citizens could never be outgunned by the government. Anyone who claims otherwise is either ignorant or lying. 
So to, to, to wrap it up, I'm going to touch on one more concept, which is whenever you take that position, you're always going to get hit back with, oh, does that mean you can have a have a, a, a tank? Or does that mean you can have an AR-15? Or, I mean, a, um, an F-16? Uh, does that mean you can have a bazooka? You always hear the bazooka phrase thrown out there. I'll quickly touch on that, and maybe I'll touch on that in, in a deeper video. But there's two things. Number one, the answer is kind of yes. I mean, you know, <laughs> we're supposed to have the same kind of firearms. Now, the only difference I'll take is what I said before, which is there's, there is a difference between firearm and artillery, okay? Artillery, again, are would I would put in line with a tank or a cannon or maybe even a bazooka. So when... Um, the founding fathers wrote it. They put they put the right to keep and bear arms. Okay, they didn't put arms and artillery. So I do believe, to some extent, the founding fathers. You can make an argument. Didn't want you to have the private citizen to have artillery. Okay, they didn't want you to just have a cannon in your front yard. There's a lot of them that probably did, and they you know part they probably did think that was okay. But they didn't. Unfortunately, they didn't specifically spell it out because I do believe back then there was definitely a difference between firearms and artillery, just like there is now so i believe things like tanks even bazookas and f-16s or whatever somebody who's anti-second amendment could make an argument that those uh are not covered because the founding fathers did put the right to keep and bear arms okay and bear obviously means be able to carry around with you and take where you go it's kind of hard to carry around with you and take where you go you know an f-16 or or a tank or whatever however i still either you can make a good faith argument with a straight face that it does apply to all those things that whatever the military can have civilians can have okay and if that means it's as crazy as a civilian can have a tank in his front yard or somebody can walk around with a bazooka then somebody can walk around in a, in a bazooka with a bazooka i mean it's not it's whatever they're whatever they have so i believe as a true constitutional second amendment reader even from a legal standpoint from a lawyer reading the text that they were all supposed to go up together so as the the military created you know bigger firearms and higher capacity firearms etc the civilian stuff was supposed to go right along with it okay that's my opinion of what the founding fathers meant could they have contemplated the type of weapons that we have today probably not i mean they couldn't complicate contemplate a lot of things but they also couldn't contemplate uh, you know, the Internet and everything else. And again, that is going to be a video for another day, how to fight some of these liberal arguments. But for today's purposes, to start out this kind of series I'm going to be doing about how to how to fight or how to argue with liberals or uh, anti-gun people about the Second Amendment, I just wanted to put out an overview of what uh, we're going to be starting from the premise of Second Amendment is only to allow for an armed citizenry to protect against tyrannical government. The other stuff is secondary. So being able to hunt, fantastic. Being able to self-defense, fantastic. Being able to do three gun, being able to shoot with your family, uh, competitive sports, all the other fun stuff you do is fantastic. Those are all offshoots of the Second Amendment. But the Second Amendment was specifically related for this meme here and this meme only. If you disagree with me, as always, feel free to comment uh, in the thing. I'll be happy to argue with you. If you like what I have to say, uh, click the subscribe button. Uh, click the bell for notifications, like, share, comment, all that other kind of stuff, and look forward to these. I'm going to be doing kind of a – I'm going to get away from the other stuff that's going on in the country now because it looks like that may, might be winding down to an end unless something weird pops up. But I'm going to start doing some uh, mainly Second Amendment-focused stuff uh, related to typical arguments that you hear out there and, and how a lawyer might respond to uh, those type of things. So uh, keep watching. I really appreciate it. As always, uh, stay safe, stay open, uh, stay uh, – he- wait, stay – Stay safe, stay healthy, stay open if you can, and then, as always, carry on. But carry on with the understanding that the reason you get to carry is in case the tyrannical government takes over, and then we can stop them. Have a good day.